Okay, I wanted to make a quick video about building ventilators uh, for the COVID-19 or coronavirus pandemic. Um, this one's not going to be super entertaining, but I will try and keep it short and to the point. I'm just going to read out of this uh, book. Okay, so the problem is not only that the virus is dangerous, that a lot of people are getting it at the same time, and hospitals are being overwhelmed, uh, which means that there aren't enough beds, antivirals, uh, ventilators, uh, personal protective equipment. Um, we're even out of toilet paper here in Albuquerque, um, and certainly N95 protective masks. One of the big pieces of equipment that helps people live through uh, infection is a ventilator, um, which is, you could think of like an iron lung. It's a machine that pumps air in and out of a patient who is unable to breathe for themselves or having difficulty breathing. Um, there's been a push on the internet to um, build an open source ventilator machine, um, and there's a lot of people working on it. Um, I am not the first, and the first thing I'm going to do in the link below is leave a link to some of the projects um, working on an open source ventilator. So what I want to do in this video is give a little bit of my thoughts on how you might build one, and then I'm going to get to this check valve, which is a piece of a ventilator, uh, or many designs of a ventilator that I made today that I think is pretty effective. You can print it in about an hour and 10 minutes, and it just uses two 3D printed pieces, a uh, piece of a shopping bag or a Ziploc bag, and one screw. So it's um, a very cheap precursor to, you know, part of a machine. It took me all day and about one, two, three, four, five five or six tries to get this thing right. Uh, it would take me months to build a ventilator. However, um, I figure if I put this online and make it open source tonight, by the time I wake up in the morning, somebody else will have designed some other pieces, uh, either in my design or somebody else's design. Um, <clears throat> okay, so first, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an engineer, I just play one on YouTube. Um, these are not professional medical uh, machines, and they should not be used um, by anyone but a doctor, maybe not even a doctor, but if it comes to using um, subpar medical equipment or letting a patient die, I think at this point maybe it makes sense to make some homemade ventilators out of soda bottles and fan motors and drills and things like that. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> I'll leave that at that. Okay, so in this video, I just want to talk about what a ventilator does, um, or a ventilator setup does, and the types of things um, that I think you might be able to find and manufacture at home um, cheaply and in large quantity, and most importantly, quickly, uh, if necessary, um, that might be able to perform those functions. So um, the first thing a ventilator will do is mix um, pure oxygen with air. Pure oxygen is toxic over a long period of time. You can't just put somebody on pure 100% oxygen long term, although um, I hear that people do uh, sometimes in brief periods of space flight, but um, most importantly like during surgery or something like that. But um, a coronavirus patient might be on a ventilator for about two weeks and um, you can't just pump pure oxygen into their lungs, you need to mix it with air. Um, so the first piece is a valve. I believe an Italian company has started 3D printing some valves that mix um, air and oxygen together in ratios from about 20% all the way up to 100% oxygen. Um, this is something I would assume works like the flow valve or flow regulator on a TIG welder. Uh, but probably doesn't have machine oil in it. Um, it's a black box to me. I'm hoping somebody else can figure that out before I even get there. Um, <clears throat> the next piece is a humidifier. Um, so after you mix uh, oxygen and air, you run it through a bubbler, which is, um, if you ever go bug hunting, I think the term for the piece of equipment is called an aspirator. Um, you might also know it as a bong. Um, it basically, you know, has um, uh, air input through a water bath and it bubbles through the water. Um, sometimes that water is heated, sometimes it's not. 
Um, I think this is a very easy piece. I think you could probably make one out of a soda bottle, a long straw and a short straw and a 3D printed soda bottle cap. I might get that done tomorrow if somebody doesn't beat me to it. I hope you will. Um, <clears throat> the real tough piece is the pump. Um, so I talked to a couple of doctors today about what, what a pump has to do. Um, so a ventilator has to pump about six to eight milliliters per kilogram of body weight of gas into somebody's lungs on the inhale stroke, and then also maintain a positive pressure of about, um, what is it, five millimeters of mercury uh, during exhale, right? And this is so that your lungs don't collapse. You will automatically exhale um, even if you are not breathing. Um, so there's a stroke pushing air into your lungs through a piston or squeezing a ball, and then there's a stroke where you exhale and they're still pushing positive pressure against you. Think of it like you don't just drop a weight when you're weightlifting, you put it down slowly. And so there are two uh, pressures in the cycle, right? One is uh, hard pressure and one is a low pressure. Um, you know, for an adult, it might be something like five or 600 milliliters of air or half a liter um, on each in breath and then um, maintaining a pressure during the exhale. Okay, the timing of a ventilator is something between 10 and 30 breaths per minute. That's inhale and exhale 10 to 30 times every minute. Um, the inhale pressure is something up to a maximum of 45 or 50 millimeters of mercury. Um, the exhale pressure again is about 5 millimeters of mercury. Um, the inhale versus exhale time duration can be anywhere from one to one to one to two, which means that, you know, if it takes you, for example, one second to take a breath, you would take a third of that second to breathe in and then two thirds to breathe out or half the second to breathe in and half the second to breathe out. Um, at 30 breaths a minute, it's actually two seconds. So it would be one second in, one second out. Um, you should get it. Okay, um, and then the last part of the ventilator is some exhaust port. Um, there's been some worry about aerosolization of um, virus coming out of people's lungs who are infected. And so a way to sterilize that air either through something like a HEPA filter or um, another sterile liquid bubbler or um, I've even seen suggested some sort of hot oil bubbler, like a deep fryer, which seems like maybe a bad idea. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to do that. Okay, so those are the functions of the ventilator. I have some ideas about the ways that some of the parts might be made, um, and some are just black boxes to me, and I haven't dug that deeply. Um, and I'm hoping that some of you might figure out some of these pieces and that together, um, we might build a useful machine. Um, <clears throat> so I was thinking that I would use some sort of piston system rather than a squeeze ball. Um, they make uh, manual ventilators that people use during like heart attacks or strokes type of thing. Um, and they're um, basically a <clears throat> rubber ball with a check valve or like a, if you've ever primed a boat or a gas pump, right? You squeeze the ball and air flows in, uh, air flows out and then air flows in one way when you open it through one check valve and then when you squeeze it can't go back through this check valve and goes out through the other check valve and pushes out. Um, that is a pretty reasonable solution, but I don't know what the supply of uh, uh, bulbs are for ventilators um, and it seems tough to me to manufacture something like that. Uh, maybe some more clever people will do that and I've certainly seen some Arduino machines that um, squeeze uh, you know a manual ventilator over and over um, at some rate. Um, I was thinking of making a two-piston system where um, you would have one motor that would drive a crankshaft and as that crankshaft goes around there would be um, on the outer radius, a piston arm that pushed um, a long stroke piston for the inhale cycle and then pushed um, from a shorter radius on the arm a short stroke piston to push a lower pressure 
of air during the exhale cycle. Um, I would assume that I would use a NEMA stepper motor and an Arduino and a motor controller because I have a lot of these sitting around if it were just me. Um, I think there's some value to building an analog product that just about anybody can build, not that just about anybody can't program an Arduino. Um, if we come up with some code, I would be happy to share it and show how to upload that, but um, you know, a DC motor or something out of, um, you know, a fan would be way too fast, but a low speed, high torque motor, maybe a geared down drill motor would be good. Um, I'm not exactly sure what type of motor, but um, I think we should figure out what motors are slow, uh, high torque, and can run basically forever or two weeks at least um, without any interruption and also are cheap and readily available maybe at Walmart or Target or something like that maybe on Amazon. Um, I've been thinking about how to build the pistons. Um, the piston volume for the larger piston has to be something like 500 milliliters maybe 600 um, and then you could uh, change the the pivot point on the crankshaft that comes off of the motor to change the actual pressed volume through that piston. Um, I've been thinking of using something smooth like a soda can uh, as a piston or um, you know something I haven't quite figured it out yet and maybe one of you will. Some household item that's um, smooth and maybe round but it doesn't necessarily have to be round but um, smooth that maybe you could 3D print a shelf or like a piston sleeve or maybe you could find even better two household items that happen to fit inside each other perfectly and become a piston. I've been thinking about using things like plastic bags to bicycle inner tubes to printed TPU o-rings to seal that piston. Um, then out of the piston you would use a set of check valves so that when the piston uh, compresses it would press um, air or, or gas into the patient and then when the piston retracts um, the patient would not have the air sucked out of them um, that check valve would close and then another check valve would allow air in from um, the oxygen air mixer um, and then of course there's a you know just an exhaust valve coming or not exhaust valve, but exhaust tube coming from the mask or intubation um, that then would go out to some sort of air cleaning or exhaust port tube, whatever. Um, I've been told that a lot of hospitals just plug this into the wall. Um, I don't know where it goes. I assume hospitals have, you know, um, large filtration systems or big uh, deep fryers that they're passing uh, virus air through. I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, again, I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on YouTube, but maybe somebody can figure out a good thing uh, to run uh, exhaust air through. Um, anyway, I worked with my friend Joe Van Cleve today, who has a wonderful YouTube channel about cameras and telescopes and typewriters and calculators and pens and paper, um, generally not medical supplies either, but he's a smart guy. And today um, we came up with this check valve, which I think will be um, a useful piece for building ventilators. Um, I made the files all in um, like a free drafting software, uh, which is online. It's called Onshape, and I'll leave a link below. It's all open source, so um, you can go in and copy and modify and download the files to make this check valve. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to print it um, and assemble it. Um, basically, it lets air go one way and not the other. So, um, so I can blow through it, but I can't suck. Um, and the other way on this side. Um, yeah, so I think um, in my design, you would need four of these check valves. These, are, again, are readily available at any plumbing supply, but um, might not, uh, you know, maybe you could get them at Home Depot, but um, these are cheap and really easy to print. You can print them in about an hour and 10 minutes, and uh, I hope they will be useful to other folks. Um, in my Onshape file, um, 
I made it, it's, it's a parametric design and I made a bunch of the parameters variables up at the top. Um, and so you should be able to go and just change one of the variables uh, that would propagate through the model for something like um, the diameter of this um, hose barb here or here. Um, I made these 22 or for 22 millimeter ID um, ventilation tubing. Uh, or ventilator tubing. I don't know what the technical term is, but you know, I could see somebody wanting to scale it down or up depending upon what other tubing they're using or change other parameters. Um, but hopefully this will be a useful building block that will get a lot of people started in um, working on this project, maybe building pumps, maybe building um, air cleaning or air mixing devices or um, bubbling humidifiers or heated humidifiers. Um, I'm trying not to make this a really complicated project. I'm trying to keep uh, Arduinos and programs uh, out of it uh, as much as I can um, so that as many people could build them really quickly uh, and easily as possible. Um, but if it comes to it, I'm, I'm no stranger to microcontrollers and we could, we could do that too. Um, the question is, can we get our hands on half a million of them? Um, okay, so if this interests you, check out the links down below for some of the open source projects that people are working on for open source ventilators, uh, face masks, N95 uh, breathing masks, and um, yeah, uh, see if you can help out build some pieces of my idea or somebody else's or your own. Um, and check out my next video on how to print this uh, check valve, and um, thanks a lot.